We're taking a look at the best and the worst with Jen and the Money Men, Executive Vice President of the Commonwealth Foundation, Jennifer Stefano, Business and Markets Analyst and Newsmax Contributor, Seth Denson, and America's Accountant, Professor Dan Geltrude. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly. All right, let's take a look at the business headlines that we're talking about today when it comes to airlines. So airlines, they've had a tough time throughout the pandemic, and there is new data on how the airlines fared last year. Seth, Delta had the best performance, followed by Alaska and uh, Southwest, but with so many issues, airlines had to combat what helped these. Uh, what do you think helped these airlines stay on top? Well, two things. One is the destinations, right? The, some of these airlines have a lot of destinations they fly to. Second is their business. Uh, capabilities. Listen, business flyers, while they're only about 12% of the total flying population, they're about 75% of the profits. Uh, business flyers spend more money as someone who's business flyer. Uh, a lot of times I'm having to make decisions very quickly. Those ticket prices are higher. They're much more profitable to the airlines company. So those, those airlines uh, that had the capability to fly business travelers around, well, they did a little bit better this go around, but they're all doing bad. Yeah. So, Jen, on the flip side, JetBlue came in last and Spirit came in second to last. So that actually makes sense to what Seth was saying, because a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of business people don't really fly Spirit. Uh, but JetBlue, in my mind, they've always done well. So why do you think that these uh, airlines are struggling? I think the interesting thing is that they're trying to optimize something old. Uh, the airplane is now an old concept. Um, it was once new. And I don't really see innovation coming out of the airline industry. You know, you sort of see they diversified into credit and the credit card game is a big part of their business. But really, when you look at the new and updates on their planes, it's sort of like, hey, you can now plug into your phone so that you can keep your Netflix addiction going and get all of the em Emily in Paris episodes and not have your phone die on you. <laughs> but there's nothing really new or innovative about how they're flying or creative ways to do it or sort of diversifying maybe an out of first class into just the net jets versus a regular carrier passenger plane. And I'm, because of the lack of innovation, I think they're going to continue to struggle because they're going to try to drive down costs with your spirits and your jet blues. And that's not yeah. going to make people happy. No. And we, Spirit had so many problems, you know, earlier uh, last year. Uh, Dan, airlines mandated masks for all passengers on all flights, which led to many issues. A lot of people upset about that, especially we saw a lot of parents, right, with kids that couldn't keep their masks on. Some were told to get off the plane. Um, do you see mask mandates uh, moving forward into the year? I do. I don't think that that's going to stop anytime soon, Allie. But listen, a lot of these angry passengers, and I understand the anger, but where it got out of control, I think maybe some of those people were having anger issues before the mask mandates, <laughs> and perhaps they only made it worse. But but I, I certainly can understand. But, you know, the airlines claim that the way they recycle the air on the airplane is actually a cleaner air than you would have somewhere else. And whether the masks are really truly medically required, I, I'm not so sure that's the case, but I don't see a change. It's, it's not a good look, so to speak. Yeah, no, that's what we're hearing, right? That the air is, is good quality. And uh, a lot of people say the masks aren't effective. Uh, Jennifer, with travel to blue states declining and a huge uptick to states like Tennessee and Florida, how do you think airlines will adjust? Because I know that, you know, a lot of people go to Florida this time of year. And so I'm wondering if they have to add flights, but then they also have a lot of pilots and, and staff who are out of work because of the vaccine mandates. That's right. This is going to be an interesting transition. For, for decades now, the, the demographics of the United States has been moving south and west. So, yeah, we're all moving out to Texas with Seth. But it, it's, <laughs> although I highly recommend Pennsylvania, Philip, yes. But I think what's going to happen is you're going to just see what's been happening is a change in hubs of where the headquarters are. And um, what's ironic is, you know, the airlines, Delta and others have gotten very woke. But they will go and take the tax incentives and lower regulations in red states. And that's what's basically happening. The, the question is, will they keep those states red or will they turn them into um, economic mm -hmm. and uh, law and order disasters like, say, California or New York? Yeah, Seth, Jenna has a good point. I think because Americans in Texas, right? Is that where their headquarters is? Right here, Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I wonder, yeah, I what do you think? What do you think is going to happen in this, this coming year? Listen, airlines have been... Uh, 
their their profits been on the decline for five years. We look at some of these airlines, we're talking 67% down from profits five years ago. So while we can easily blame the pandemic, and certainly that's been a hit, the government's kept them propped up. I think the key for airlines going forward is to get past this pandemic. They've got oil cost headwinds ahead. Uh, they've got people that, quite frankly, just don't like flying because of all of the things that we talk about, delays and baggage issues, and we're all crammed in there so tight. But COVID is the key. You got to get COVID over with. And, uh, you know, we can get flying again, but certainly flying to these red states where, you know, come on to Texas. Come see us here. Yeah. We'll, we'll take- <laughs> I think I think we should all go, Jen. And, and Dan, let, let's go to Texas. It's a little warmer there. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Jen, Dan, and Seth. Always great to have you. Thank you.